and welcome back to Piano Secrets. In this video I will be teaching you how to play Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata third movement. The first thing that you should know is the scales and chords that we're going to be using. The first scale is the C sharp minor scale and it's like this. Your first chord is going to be C sharp minor like this, C sharp, E, G sharp. And what he's gonna do is bring all these notes below. So we're gonna have here those. We're gonna place the right hand. And then what we do is double up G sharp. G sharp is here, we bring it here. And we have his first chord. And the song starts like this. Now he's gonna go all through the inversions in this, and then he's gonna flip it. That means he's gonna do C, E, G sharp, C sharp. And again, he's gonna flip it. E, G sharp, C sharp, E. And then he's back to the one he started, an octave higher. Next one. And then he gets to the top. So it's important that you think technically to resolve this and all of these arpeggios, you think on the movements of the hand. When we play these chords, you can tell that I went down on this one, I'm gonna go up and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Each time I do that. So when I break them, it's very important that the thumb plays down and then all three notes are up down, up, okay? So the thumb plays down and all three notes afterwards play up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, each time. So that's the first movement you should understand very well and you could practice just thinking on that. After that, after you have the down, up movement, you're gonna take a look at the length of the fingers and you're gonna say the first finger is shorter, the fifth finger is also shorter. So that means when there are smaller fingers, you go in. So we're gonna do in, out, out, in. In, out, out, in, and so forth. This one could play a little bit outside because the key is a Y key. So we have the same thing. In, out, out, in, and we continue the same manner. So those two movements have to be right, combine them, and then there's one last thing to get us to play it very quickly, which is the rotation. So if you have G sharp and G sharp, you can tell that I cannot play this G sharp and play this one without moving. I will have to go towards this. So there's a rotation. What we have to do is gradually do the rotation like this, but add the C sharp to it. And then we just add the E in between. And we get the speed. Now, all there is to the C sharp minor chord is add the C sharp below. And I show you how to put it together very slowly. So we have C sharp together, together, together. Every other note. Get to the forzando here, you 
would take a pause before it. So if you come in. A piano on the second note. When he wrote forzando in one note, that means right after it's going to be lighter than the forzando. Next thing is to play in reference to the beat. So we're going to play like this. Okay, to get the speed, you will have to master the down up, like I mentioned, the in and out, and the rotation together to get this. Okay, so know your scale, know your chord, and technically, all of this can be solved in the same manner. Next one, what we do from here, if we have this, now we're going to do the move these two notes. And what you have to think is this is found on the scale. Is this chord? Is that G sharp major? If we bring it all the way down here, he does the same thing. He add the G sharp, and now he moves this the same way. Okay, one more time slowly. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. So we have first one like this, second one like this, and now we're gonna add one more. This in this chord is easy to understand. If you have the C sharp minor chord, you raise the third. You get the major chord, so it's C sharp major. He brings it up here. He adds a B in the bass. That will be a C sharp seven with this B. And then he runs it the same way. So we have this now, this chords. Okay, so I'm going to do all three, just right hand for now from the beginning. Always remember, it's important that you do the down up movement. Chord, we move, down up all the time, in and out, smaller fingers play in, longer fingers play out. Sando, we go to C sharp, same technique, and chord. Okay, make sure you got all those notes right, and now we're gonna do a little bit the left hand. So we have C sharp on the first one and G sharp. We go, we lower this to C, forzando, B, and then we're going to get to A. All together, if you combine all three movements, the down up and the in and out and the rotation, you could get it to this speed. Then we're gonna go to A. Now it's important that all that plus an accent on the beat, we're counting four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one. But this chord, we're going to take it from the 4th chord of the scale. So we have this. 
that is the chord that we have the F sharp minor and if we read this chord here at the C sharp below we have the same so we have the A here and if we I play before this passage so you just run this up rotate rotate on the fifth finger and back it helps you that he repeats this note and then it's just adding the middle note okay chord you can see here fourth chord of the scale okay and then we play it this is easier than at the beginning because the same technique is applied here down up down up down up so when you play it down on the first one up down again on the first one okay in we stay inside we don't go out much a little bit only on the two fingers on the inside then we have rotation and you have the whole passage then here we go to an A7 you can see here again it comes on the scale A7 it has an interval a diminished dissonant here but he brings these three notes place them here add C sharp to it and have this same technique from before change here so same chord and back to this chord flip on the versions okay depending on your level you might have trouble coordinating the hands it's always every other note so every other note Lower. Matches on the second one doesn't. Same. The reason I do a pause there is because he did a for something and he said port again. That you should emphasize a little bit of those notes that matches the beat. Okay, so emphasize there a little bit. So when you go quick, it helps to maintain the rhythm. gonna change so what I say I study the line a little bit and I say G I have to bring that up somehow I could bring it with all, both hands together crescendo and release crescendo add a G on the top so he moves that around if we move like this that means rotation so we have this increase the melody clearly hear it and then together For the right hand only, rotation from one key to another one, very simple, each time. See, I'm rotating together. Very 
might put in the fourth finger here sometimes the fifth it depends for the whole passage I keep the fourth important to put one here for my hand those fingers work very well it depends on your hand you might have to put fifth finger on the top For Sando again, and we should pause a little bit and we go back to piano. We do the same thing. The only thing is here we extend it and we go to the next octave. So we change this here. And same technique. There's a rotation here. For Sando and with an A sharp on the bass same technique for this and we're going to resolve to D sharp 7 to here and you have the two chords together so diminish it matches them the same way Notice that you have to exaggerate a little bit more this than the other one. For Sando and we go to all the keys. Then the second theme is gonna come in. Now it's important here when you have this chord D sharp seven, you make sure because they are all black keys. It's okay if you put flat fingers in it because the the always the black key area you should play a little bit more flat and not like this. The reason is if it's, it's too uh, much pointing uh, towards uh, cool fingers, then you might fall. But if it's more like this, you can't fall. Then the second theme is gonna come up. So we have this now. Every other note in out. is the G sharp minor scale and it's like this and from that scale Beethoven is going to take the first chord here and bring it down to the left hand and move those notes around like this technically it's not difficult what you need to do is first work a little bit on the independence that means articulate each finger and then add a little bit of rotation in it so that's all there is involved we could count four beats we could do one two three four and then we could say that that's a G sharp minor we could change the notes to here and all he's doing is going to the fifth tone which is this one. So he's using this chord wrap all the way down, he brings it down here and he moves it around just to keep the voices close. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, let me do it very slow. Two, three, four, change. One, two, three, and now instead of using the full chord now he's gonna use B and D so it's gonna go back and forth four beats again one two three four and and then he's gonna change to G and D sharp two three four and back so I'm gonna play this you have to know it very well because it repeats two times 
So let's do it once again and see if you can pick up the notes. I'm gonna do just the chord. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And what you have to do is always do the same movement. So you do the root, the fifth, and the third. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and back. So it's going to continue here, it's going to repeat. So to this chord progression, he's going to add the melody. The melody is going to be, maybe what I'll do is play it all together so you can see and then we'll slow it down a little bit. So it's still like this. And then here it's going to change a little bit, but it's the same melody. So it's important that we get rid of some of the ornaments and we play the melody like this. And you think a little bit on the scale. And those four notes he's playing with those and sometimes the G. Now all that is left for us to add is the ornament. So after the B and G, we have that ornament. Okay, I'm gonna do one last time very slow. Now, if you want to start doing a little bit of independence and put it together, you put every chord, two, three, four, and do this. Now, if we do it together very slow, we have this. So that's the end of the line right there. And what is important is where it matches. It matches on the first one, matches. Here it matches. And here it matches. Then this by itself. Okay, notice the ornament and increase the tension here. And release. Okay? Okay, so this you can speed it up and I recommend using doing one line at a time. So with a little bit of rotation. So you can play very clean and sometimes add a little bit of pedal when you feel like it. So we have another insistence here. Now it changes from here we have this pattern. Together, same time, together and together. Together, together, together at the same time. Okay, so it's very important that you work it out one line at a time. First line is this. Second line, third line, last line. So, and each time is repeating the same motive with a crescendo on the D sharp. A little bit more. So now, for the next section, it's going to have the same notes. 
same notes we did. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then here it's going to change. So what we're going to think is a little bit on the line. When we play the first, it, everything is related. So you're going to see that if I, this passage is an octave, so we're going to simplify it and play with single notes. So if at the beginning we did, I you see that it's going to do. So it's the same notes, but using syncopation and using octave. So the first thing is trying to learn the right hand and you could do single notes. Leap. And we're gonna get to there. Now, to do it, we could do it in octaves. First B. Now it's important that uh, this B and syncopated. So that means if we have this rhythm, that you are able to maintain the basic beat of the quarter note and play at the same time. Now, let me do it together so you can see it very slow and I'm going to show you where it matches. The first one matches B, octave, octave again, together, every other note, every other note. C sharp matches. Marches, marches. Every other note again. Okay, those are all the notes. You go over and over, maybe split it by chords, you know. So as far as the technique to play this, it's very simple, it's just octaves. And remember to emphasize sometimes the one, like a bending note. And we have the same technique from before. If before you articulated the fingers first, no movement on the hand, just articulate. And then once you want to play up to speed, you use the rotation a little bit. So we have this. So it's important you maintain the rhythm because that D sharp is going to make it jump a little bit. Now, it's important that when it says crescendo, you remain piano. A little bit more. Until we get to the forzandos. So it's important also when you get to the forzando, there's a little pause before you have right here. Pause and play. I do it like that to simplify it a little bit. So this passage will be in octaves, so I will have this. And we change chord. Now the important thing here is we just have this. Okay, and each one you should take a pause, you know.
Okay, now to add the left hand, we keep the same rotation going. We have two of those. We're gonna change. First note matches. ask me sometimes what you have to do with this is maybe simplify it and play with one note and so then you can tell about the speed and then you can tell that when the trill is is a uh, kind of like a difficult this most people have trouble with it, but you, what you have to do is take it one note at a time. Just say the note is A sharp in this case, you move it like this. So if you could do that first, then we could start adding the octave. So we play the octave here. We don't add this one yet because I want it to be relaxed. So you play it together here. As soon as the thumb plays, you have to close your hand because this was easy so close your hand and then open to play the B that's the only way you get this right so play lift a little bit close your hand and then open if you don't do that you will get tense if you stay here it's too much work. You could do that for independence though and then try to adjust to close and you could practice with rhythm. You play the first one, close and open. Also you could do the opposite way. All together and you got it there. So when we do it from before up to speed. same you have to think how fast can I play it so I will play it like this but then we add the octave so and we do the same technique we close the hand as soon as you put play it and then we open down up close and up and play it okay it's not necessary to do uh, two turns because with the pedal and the speed it will sound almost like it's a complete trill. So let me play this for you up to there and let's see what it sounds like. scale so A major is like this and he's gonna use this chord an octave higher from there so this four notes and also he's gonna invert the chord and put the C sharp on the bass double up at the E and the A here which are the same notes E and A from the A major chord and then he plays there very loud okay so all of these notes I'm gonna play next are gonna be part of the scale so 
So he does here a turn on A, then he does third, fourth, and second. I repeat the same pattern. Okay? And the fourth time he goes all the way up the scale and that's a turn here. And that's all we have. So we have this. And then it repeats. So we have the big A major and then we'll do this pattern. So let's kind of do the notes. All the way up, coming back, all the way up. This is the second time, third time. And the fourth time he extended it all the way up, little turn, and go down the scale to G. I hope this is clear. Just uh, notice that the scale has A and E, so we're taking this note and then putting these three notes, the first three notes of the scale. He basically flipped this part and did this. That's the A major scale, so he's doing. Several times, and then extending it. Okay, so let's try to play that. And here he also does the inversion of the chord, the A major chord. So we have A major chord here from the scale, we could flip the notes and get this chord. So we could play the left hand. Let's say if we play the big chord of the bass, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, for the left hand. Technically, it's simple. You don't have to do much. The only thing is getting the speed on the scale. So let's do it together now. Chord. Two, one. Matches A. Each time descending A. Matches. Matches again. Now each one. And we end here. So all this is using just the A major chords and scale. Okay? To practice it, just remember that always the descending A matches again descending and the last time descending and we start doing every four notes and we get there. To play it up to speed, I'll say you could do it, some rhythms with it. You could do like this. It starts one slow, one fast. So now E it's gonna be quick. Back to A. Same. release so you go practice like this okay also we could do the opposite like I always say all four notes practice like that then also it's important you watch when you switch the thumb. So we do. Switch the thumb, you will rotate a little bit, switch it, put it here, back and start over. Rotate towards the left. When you go up and have these notes, I don't do fourth fingers, very accurate. Do five, three, and rotate. Okay, and get there. If we do it up to speed, remember to count this one, two, one. Okay, and it's fortissimo and then piano. Crescendo there. And then pianissimo, back to pianissimo. So we have this now. Crescendo. Okay, last time. One, two, one.
and then we go to the next part. Let me play it now. Now here we end up on G and he's using a chord from the other scale, the G sharp minor that we did on the second part. It's only flipped here, so he gets to the G here. Then he has the A, it's going to the second chord. And it ends the line. Now it's important you think this piano. So together, first note. Now. I like to end it soft on the G sharp. It's like E major is on the bass now. Change your chord. So G sharp minor. D sharp 7. Tension. And re release there to E major. So one last time. And then we have the same A major. And the same scale. Now the match is going to be on this ascending note. So first you play the scale and the A major is so only one pulse. One, ah. Uh. There here we match it. Match. The scale going up. When you do the A, the technique is the same. We have just the switch here on A, back, right? And then here we have the complete scale with the D in it. You could take your time on D sharp a little extra because it's changing there. So I have. With a little bit of pedal but if you could do it with, without pedal that would be better so we play a major we count one pulse one uh. we match it ascending now match it scale going now notice a major now Two of those. This will be a G diminish. Back to G sharp minor. And then we have a D sharp seven. There. I don't know your level, so I don't know what you're playing, so I can't comment on that. But if you follow this one step at a time and you are very patient you will get uh, you will be successful at playing this so A major now for sando which means we pause and then we play for sando pause and pause and play matches the first note and pause again and we finish the line now he's going back to the scale G sharp minor so we're gonna think on the melody we have this so to that what we do is take that melody with the fifth finger add the D Notice that all we're doing is always this, but with a D below. Then we do, and we put the D on top. Okay, so we do it. Piano. Okay, and 
is using the same scale. Left hand, we have the same kind of thing. If you could hear that little theme in both hands, then it makes it much easier. Let's say if we play it together. We add the D sharp. We add the D sharp here. An octave. And it's important though. Now you bring those out. Okay. If we do it together, it's very exciting. We do it slowly. Try to bring those notes out. If you want to go for it, you can. If we play from before. It's nice when you're practicing by yourself that you exaggerate a little bit the melody, even though this is pianissimo. I want to hear that when I play. Now, I emphasize more the thumb. Up, center of the hand and to bring those up you just aim more towards that okay okay let's play one last time okay then we go back to the chord it's just this chord that is split. You want to C sharp minor? Split. We go back, so we have. Okay, one last time slowly. You split the chords. Before splitting chord, G sharp minor, back to G sharp minor, D sharp major, and then we have this. Now the same melody, now it's gonna do it an octave. And we add the D sharp. So that's what we have. So D sharp in the middle of change, change and change. Left hand, okay, together. We skip now, we do the same pattern. Jump, same melody. again the same G sharp minor we had C sharp minor G sharp minor over D sharp and then here we're gonna go changing B and the chord split A major back to the theme. So it has an staccato theme here when first we were playing big lines. So we have this now. back to that. It's important that you take a minute when you do this, loosen up, now there. When we finish up here, finish up here, and this is 
short staccato and then long note and short with an accent there. There we have to emphasize release. Release. In other words, to help us play it, we use the one before from the chord. Now, after we get here, we have the theme again. Remember we did. I will have the theme. And we end. Just continue the rotation here. Always the same. Right, left, right, left, right. is the C sharp minor scale. And what he will do in this part is go back to the materials that we play before and the other section, the first one, the second and the third one. Now what he does here is raise the E and have this chord, a C sharp major chord. And what he does is gonna go through the inversions all the way down and put it here. Now, if you flip the chord here, that gives you the big forte that we have. So it's just those notes. First inversion. Now he will go here afterwards and play these notes. All the inversions. Kind of what we did at the beginning of the piece. Now, it's important technically, I'm going to explain this one, but we have several arpeggios, four or more arpeggios that they are in the same manner. You have to solve in the same way. Each time when you do the inversions, your hand goes up and down when you play them. So you have to use that movement when you play the first note. So C sharp, we're gonna go down. We go up on the rest of them, down on F, up, down on G sharp, down on C sharp, down on F again, and so forth. So that's the first thing you should know when you try to manage these fast arpeggios. Uh, the next step would be trying to adjust according to the length of the fingers so the thumb can be too much out has to be in so we play in there we go out the two middle fingers we go in out again in out in we stay in and the hand kind of that's like a circle around it Okay, after that, to 
get the speed, we do a rotation. We also discussed at the beginning of the videos. Rotation going up towards the top note. And then we got it there. Now, to play quickly, we have to play this in reference to the beat. When you mark it, when you do this, the top note is a little bit louder. So what you could, what that does is it gives an impulse to go back to the first finger. A little for the a little bit. I know that's piano, but to help you play it. So if you start doing those things and try to put it together. I would recommend you separate each movement and then just forget about everything and try to play it and go back and forth between these uh, principles and you will get it. If you could get the first one that means you get all the other ones afterwards. So let's do the C sharp major very slowly one last time. So we have the 40 and then we match every other note with the left hand. important to give you some tips on this when the finger press the key right after you press you relax you almost have to let the finger drop by itself you don't even press hard enough only maybe I'll say on the top of the keyboard here you really press but here so uh, right after you relax so that means when you play this finger you will not tense up when you play F sharp don't not tense up any tension I do not recommend so I'm going to do this and we don't put pedal and we obtain the speed now after that what he's going to do is going to go to a C sharp 7 which we did before is this chord he brings the beat below and keep the same chord there. So we have these notes. Remember the principle. First play the chord. Then play it thinking on where do you go down. So always the first note out of the four and up. Down up. Then you adjust according to the length of the finger somewhere where it feels comfortable. And when you play the black key area, you could be a little bit more flat. So I'm a little bit more flat sometimes. Then you add rotation. And after all that, you play in reference to the beat. Okay? So one other tip that I can, I'm thinking right now is that the thumb has to close up very quickly so when you play this F sharp your thumb is relaxed when you play this your thumb is relaxed all the time so if you have any tension that's giving you a sign that you're doing some movement or something wrong so I recommend playing it slowly with no tension and then if the tension starts building up as you speed it up there's something wrong you have to go back to slow okay now after this chord, C sharp 7, for Sando, we go to F sharp minor. Now, this one we already played it at the beginning of the piece. He has this basic chord and open up, he puts an A and goes up. Remember that we discussed rotation. And then the two center notes, the pivots of the hand, the second and the third finger has to be firm. That brings us back to C7, this chord, but it's now changed up. So the F is on the bass and the G sharp and B and C sharp is up here now here the movements are the same the only difference is that 
by holding this you can see that the fourth and the second finger they are too far apart so that means you have to move quickly with the thumb so when you get to G sharp you move you kind of practice like this G sharp close close and of course you use all the other movements the up down movement right the length of the fingers you could keep it kind of in the middle it's true that these two fingers I go out in and the rotation to four speed but you rotate kind of after four notes okay with the bass and we go back to F sharp minor so from the harmony based patterns that we did we're gonna go to a melody line now at the beginning of the piece we did this section so all this section coming up is gonna be the same the only difference is he took here G sharp minor and now he's gonna drop this a tone below or a whole step and it's gonna play it here. Now I'm gonna play the melody without the ornaments and we have this. So we have the same line but dropped a whole step. Now the same as the other part that we did, we're gonna add the ornaments. So we have this now. F sharp minor as a bass chord. So if we're using this, that means the left hand has to be F sharp minor also. So that would be the first chord. So we have this chord four times. Eventually we split it. We have C sharp seven four times. Back to F sharp minor with two notes. Stay F sharp, still F sharp minor. And we get to F. Now we could start doing the back chords, so that means we could play here. The change of the chord. Change. So now we analyze the background, we analyze the melody, now it's putting it together note by note. So we have the big. Match the first note. Match. C, -S -C sharp and F sharp matches. Ornament to G sharp. Matches F. B. C sharp. Matches the first note. Match. 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 important is that when you do the C, C has sharp, C sharp has an accent, this is important to bring it out, the F sharp, because it's the great tension, C sharp, higher note, we increase the volume, tension again release, Tension, release. So try to play with different dynamics there. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. Let's continue to the next section. The next section, if you did the theme with the right hand, You 
can see now that he brings it to the left hand. With a little changes there, a little bit syncopated rhythms to create more excitement. So he does this. Accent melody. again double F sharp F sharp again D double and then we're gonna change the chords there so I wanted to just do that if you could do it like this and then speed it up okay now all we have to do if when we play this one, we play F sharp minor here. So the same chords we play on the left hand, we're gonna play here. And all we're gonna do is move them around. So F sharp minor, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two three four okay now if we want to do it together we could start doing this is I've seen many different versions of the beat uh, really bad fingering the finger that really works is at the beginning 2-4 and then 1-2-4 for this rotating like we did before with the left hand then 1 here 1-2-3 very strong fingers and back to the same fingering Okay, so all, all that's left for you to do is just try to match it, try to slow it down as much as possible and look where we match the notes. Maybe hopefully you have the score there and it helps a lot. And maybe you had a trouble with just fingering. So if we play this little section we'll do. We haven't done this next part. So I haven't done, so we play, we have this. So maybe what I'll do is do it very slowly one last time and don't forget to rotate. Let's say here we rotate towards the fourth finger and then we do a rotation here. One finger brings it to the next one. Okay, to do it together we could start like this. Emphasize, release. Emphasize a little bit C sharp, release. And those two match. Okay? Now we're gonna change, we're gonna go to a D chord. So we have these notes F, D, A, D. Comes from here, D major. So we have two of those. Go to a D7 and then to G. D7 is like this, but he picked the D, the C, and the A and got rid of those two because those two notes he's going to play with it here. Okay? So when we play D major here. have D major to D7 increase of tension and then you hear release here okay left hand for this the notes that they are missing sometimes on the right hand 
they are brought up to the left hand as a melody. Okay, let's do it together. So we're gonna split this, and most of the time is every other note. One last time, so F sharp, F sharp, A with F sharp, D, F sharp, F sharp, okay, let's play it now from before. G. Now, when you switch from D7 to G, we end up here. Now, we have four beats of G. So, instead of playing it four times this, he's gonna move it. And here, I would do one, two, four. Those are the fingers. Before, we did one, two, three. Any other finger, I don't recommend. So, here, we're gonna move it. Very simple, a technique from Mozart. Mozart used this a lot on the left hand and many of his sonatas and even Haydn did, so most of them used them. And sometimes we use it to harmonize popular music like this. So it's important you try to know that in both hands. So he, uh, that's the G major. That's the first one. Then he goes back to the D7, one, two, three will do, and he moves it around. those notes and then he goes back to G so chord progression G major to D7 to G major the tension chord is the D7 tension release melody so we get to the G same melody that we started with. I hope you already played this well so this will give you less problem. So pretty much I do a separate several times to get the melody sinking and then I started putting it together. So I start with G. G. Match is the first one. Last one, the D. Release to F sharp. Increase the body left hand to A. Okay, let's do it up to that point. It's very important here. When he does this, it creates a very nice effect. So let's say if we play D. That release there. Increase. Release to G. So he actually using the G chord, the second note here. He's using it as to instigate, like almost like a suspension, and then releasing. Same here. Okay, so let's do it, try to do it like that. So let's do it one last time, uh, a little bit faster. And then we're going to change there. So the same principles apply for this right hand. The only thing sometimes you could do rhythms like I've been discussing before. To get the speed. And 
and four notes. Okay? Now if we play it... Okay, let's go a little bit more. So this is here. It's almost like a diminished chord. Tackle this one, diminish back to C7. Just only one time we have this one. F sharp minor. This is almost like a D major. And then we have this one, which is two notes and middle. This uh, this one's important, you put octave and you have to jump on the thumb. So you one three. Do not do this. I've seen it. Many students come with this finger, and that's it's a terrible position for the hand. You will never be able to play this. You will get tired. So do the thumb on the G sharp. Okay. To play it now, let's practice a little bit. Fingering. We have one, four, two. One, two, three. Going to F sharp minor, same from before, fingering. Open now, we have F octave A, and then we have this one three in the middle. Okay, now notice that up, release here, land on it. So think a little bit this one as a diminish, resolve it to a C sharp minor, F sharp minor, D major, and then here we have G sharp seven. Okay? Melody line. For Sando, for Sando C. Let's do it up to there. So we could do it together already. Release. For Santo. For Santo again on C. And then here's gonna be easier all the way through. So let's just try to play it one time. So the next part, we're going to use an A major and he's going to bring those up right there. He's gonna go back and forth between the two. Four times. That's D, D, C sharp. And then he finishes up here on a G sharp major. Okay, so same from before the movements. Maybe it's important to play loud the E and then release this. help the hand. So he's going to use the A major, so he's going to use these notes. For Santo always. Get to G. So let's try to play it together. For Santo. Get here. After the forzando, the forte, back to piano. So this could be accomplished by thinking on the line first. So think on the on the scale. D 
that's the scale. Now, if we start harmonizing a melody, when we have the sh uh, F sharp, we could add that F sharp minor. When you play the line, chord, three notes and chord, two notes and chord. broken there. Now it's fairly simple because here we're gonna have a pedal point with G. Okay, so always go back and forth no pedal, a little bit sometimes with the right hand doesn't play. It will give you a little bit of something there, mysterious. Notice the melody line. And he's gonna go an octave higher. And if you think of this line, it's the same line, but he's going to do it with short notes. And not only that, he's going to add the same chords that we did before. So, to do it, we'll do it slowly. time is slowly notice that two chords repeat same chords again insistent and now he breaks them there. So, take it very slowly. Know that when you have the split, you could bring the middle note. Hopefully you can hear that. And back to pianissimo. So if we do this, the left hand is going to stay always the same. Thank you. 
first thing that you should know is all the themes that we're going to play in this section, they're based on the first, second and third part and all he's going to do is transpose those themes to a different key and do the same thing. So if you didn't learn those well, this might be a little bit difficult. If you did learn those well, this might confuse you a little bit because all he's doing is transposing the themes. So let's get started and we're going to start with the melody. At the beginning we played this theme. Based on this chord. Now what he's going to do is drop that and go down to C sharp minor and play the same thing. So we're going back now, so I rewind but in a different key. Totally different from the G sharp minor that we did that theme on. And then you start adding the ornaments. Next step is looking at the left hand and if we have C sharp minor here we'll do the same on the left hand and he does four beats of this. So we have C sharp minor, four of those, G sharp seven, C sharp minor, a little bit of an augmented, going back to sharp, going back to C sharp minor again. Okay, so we could start uh, putting a little bit of the melody there with those chords. And we have transposed the theme from the first part when we did this. We did this. Notice that it's the same material. The same tips apply for the left hand. Some people have asked me, how do you get that left hand to play quickly? The first, you could do accents every other note. That means you could emphasize very slowly C sharp, E, C sharp, E like this. You could emphasize a different key. In this case, we're emphasizing fourth finger and second finger. We could emphasize instead the first finger. First finger. So that way we always play with different strength on the fingers. We could emphasize the first out of the four notes. The fourth finger each time. start doing uh, rhythms like this, slow and fast. You could do it the opposite way. You could do it every four. Or do the whole thing then. So if you have any trouble with this, you go back to slow, you try it again this procedure over and over again. Be very patient. It might take two, three days. I'm not sure. It just depends on your level, how many hours you practice. All of that is involved. So let's try to match now together both hands with the melody. Match is the first one. Same time. Ornament to D sharp. and see matches matches again matches the E and then maybe we play it Piano, 
but even though it's piano, I want to give the G sharp a little bit extra because it's a longer note than the other, so long note, back to piano, crescendo a little bit to the G sharp, crescendo again, accent release, okay, that's all we have. Next part, we'll use the same chord so I don't have to say anything about the left hand, but we have this melody now. And there is no difference other than the notes. So what we have to do is just put it together slowly with a G sharp, the melody. Some people ask me, how do you get from octave to octave? Well, G sharp, you are there. This leap here. I think the hardest thing in this section, if it's any difficulty, it might be on the leap. So you have to use the gravity when you play this note to go up and allow us to play this one up and allow us to play down. Notice I use gravity all the time. I use the force going down to throw me here, coming back here and again. And always relax, always very loose. And then it comes to the forzandos. Left hand was the same that we discussed. And then it's going to change a little bit. Let's try putting it together. Uh, but now that if we do this, the syncopation is very important, so I don't want you to slow down because we have. So until you get there, do not slow down. Then it's changing again. A little bit of syncopation and change it to the long themes afterwards. Slowly together. Crescendo. Crescendo more. All together we have this. Forzando here and you could analyze this and say okay I know the chord it's this chord it's a C sharp major 7 so it's a, it's a C sharp 7 that is flipped and the F is taken from here and put on the top so that gives you that this one, even though it's a forzando, that should be bigger than the next one because the next one resolves to F sharp minor. So. Now here we're gonna go to a B7. But I just flip this note, so flip this way, the D is put on the top. together slowly one time and then he changes so yeah different approach so we're having all the time seventh and major or minor chords it's true that 
that I like a little bit sometimes how it sounds like Okay, let's do it together now. I think one thing that's very important that we discussed in the first video is how to solve this trailing here. So remember what we talked about and try to do it separate here. And remember that when you play the trill, you close your hand and you open. I think that's the most important thing, how quickly you can close the hand and then here. Same here. It's important that when you do it with both hands together, you watch that because sometimes you are busy playing both hands and you forget to move and close your hand. And here's the same. You could do rhythms. Then we get to D major. And we have the same pattern from before. We're gonna change the scale and we have this. So the scale that we're gonna use is basically that. Now if you have this, so he's gonna start here, he's gonna start here on A, going to D. That's a turn, so you go all, all the way up, again, and then one last time, that's a little turn to resolve there. To practice this, when you do the, the major, I recommend for the scale doing the, the slow, fast movements. Put four here, three, two. Or you could do the opposite. Four notes now. Completely. Okay. And then after that you go back to slow a little bit and try to match it with the D chord here. D major is like this inversion, right? So we have the version here. Every four notes. Sometimes we go from playing this course like this to breaking it down, but it could have been like this, but he did variation there. It's very interesting to see that when the right hand plays quickly, the left hand plays slow. When the right hand plays slow notes, the left hand plays fast notes. This could help you. If you start composing your own music, try to play different uh, kind of patterns and different kind of speeds when you play this. So, let's go again. Crescendo. The crescendo now, piano. And we resolve there. So we got there, we have a trill. I think everybody can play trills perfectly. You can work on articulating, lifting the fingers, and all 
also had a little bit of rotation. The closer the finger, the closer the fingers, the harder it is to rotate because they are right next to it. You almost don't rotate. The more apart they are, let me say if I pick fourth finger, I rotate more. So for in this case, I don't rotate much. I just stay there. You should watch also when you do this, your thumb, that's, that's not lifting up like this with tension, that's staying within the key there on B. So if it does lift up, that means you're going to have trouble, you're going to tense up and you're going to get tired maybe or feel some kind of uncomfortable. If you are like this, that's a sign that you are getting tense. So try to keep it close to the key, play very light and gradually get to the speed, controlling that finger. So that's all I have to say to solve that trill. Left hand, we have C sharp minor, we do the version and then we'll flip it this way. Then we go to G sharp seven, we're solving to A again. So we have this little chord progression. Okay, so if you do it with both hands, Last time. And it says piano. So because it says piano, I will do the accent here. We have the seventh chord. And then finish up the light. Because first we came from here. And then we have the forzando again. So the next part we have the same chord dropped an octave and everything is dropped one octave even the pattern that we have same pattern remember that we used to match that D there with the chord now we're gonna match the starting of the next D this one get there. It's the same pattern. We're going up. We don't match that one. We match the next one. This one. Now B matches F sharp, C sharp, G and we get to the chord. To get the speed work on the same way we work the others. Matches. Matches. And backwards. You notice the syncopated rhythm there when you do this. Okay, when you do. Here we have again a D major A inversion forzando forzando and we get there. So let's try to play it now. Notice that so far we transpose everything that we play on the first part and we're going to continue transposing that. And the next theme is you can see that at the beginning we play this. Now we're going to change it so instead of here we're going to go here. So it's very important that you understand that at the same notes, same difficulty, just transpose. In this case, when we did here, we were in this chord, and if we go, how many notes does it think? So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes, a fifth lower. We have the C sharp minor, and that's what we're gonna use. So C sharp minor like this. So he's gonna flip, put the C sharp here and here. It's important that you realize that it's the same thing we did at the beginning.
So if we have the theme like that, we could add one note, the G sharp in this case, to harmonize it and go all the way down. That's one. And like I mentioned before, you should bring that theme out on the top, being piano like it is. Now what he does is flip this, put the G on the top, G sharp, and do the melody below. So if the melody is on E, I, I aim towards the E. I put more weight on it. And sometimes I put more weight on the inside of the hand. Left hand is the same. Back and forth. Notice that I cut the theme. Just to have a point of reference where I'm going to rest the hand so I don't get tight and I play faster that way. So I kind of think a pause there. But I'm not going to play a uh, pause when I play. but I do emphasize a little extra there. So, left hand now, we have the C sharp. When we get to F sharp, we add the G, and we do the same here. Jump to an octave. Always remember that theme. Same thing. Put it all together. So you could go for it and play it quickly. He wrote piano. Crescendo. again so how much what kind of curve do you do with the dynamics is totally up to you next next thing it would be so we got this C sharp minor chord that we worked out, worked out a lot because this, this part is in C sharp minor so we have this again C sharp and this chord, we just split them. Okay, now we're gonna go to F sharp minor, the inversions. So it comes from here. And we do the F on the bass and split that. Back to C sharp minor. Here we have G sharp major right there and back to this so I'm gonna play it one time split and one time so you can see more of the chords F sharp minor C sharp minor G sharp major and C sharp minor if I split it with chords If I play it the way it should go, it will be short, short, this blend in, last time a little faster, okay, so next section now, we did the theme, and that theme is going to repeat in octaves now, so we have this. more difficult because you have the octave and you also have the second finger in the middle so the second finger moves along an 
and always have the thought of the C sharp minor scale in it. If you have problems, you could split them. Okay? And then you repeat the same. The same thing applies. You start with a crescendo and we aim, you could aim for the top. You know? I would like the top note rather than the uh, inside. But for practice and pr purposes, you could bring any of those. You know, you could exaggerate that, you could exaggerate the G. the one below just for practicing so it's, it will ease up when you play naturally because you force it left hand think on the melody right so now we jump jump again Always think on the theme. So splitting all this is a way to get closer to what Beethoven really wants and what he was thinking on the melody and where's the melody within the harmony and this big chord. So that's why I split it like that. Now left hand together with the right hand we have this. a little bit and do a pause in it there because this force is gonna bring me here this. so this force here brings me to the middle same here watch There, it's notice that he wrote a crescendo very well done. Crescendo loud. Piano. Crescendo. And always try to hear that thing. So if we play it all together. with it and let's continue here again inversions of the chord so we get to here so here we have C sharp minor we'll flip it like this F sharp minor back to C sharp minor G sharp major so let's do it again chord there there, C sharp minor, and then when we do the articulation, we have short, long note. Okay, so we have, and then it's gonna change. Notice it's the same chord a little bit more open now here's gonna change to D major inversion and inversion here and six with the F on the bass which is part of D major back to C sharp minor G sharp major so it's the same chords get there so let's do it with the articulation slow so D major C 
Asia Minor. And we get to the we get to the theme from before, from the beginning. the whole song and also this part is transposed we do have this now we have so the technique is the same the rotation articulation so you could measure the one two three four one two three four one two three four one two Okay, melody line. So we have kind of an staccato portato line and with a melody first. Do -do -do. Bo, I bet you. Same, an octave higher. And then we have this. Rotation again all the time. Now, you can see the chord that is the sharp major again. Same kind of rotation. Okay, if we do it together. First one. Rotation in both hands. Easy part. Okay. Now, when you play that line, it's important to me. For some people, it's not. But to me, just to me. Long line, that means. this I like to do a detached maybe no pedal it depends to me it gives more excitement some people like to put pedal there and we could do it from there so long note crescendo to the last part and it's important to even though you're growing when you did this but here you start in light to save energy a little bit more and then you get there okay materials that we already used on part one, two, three, etc. All of them. So the first thing is that we're gonna have an F sharp minor, F sharp A, and C sharp, 
and we're gonna put the C sharp below and I'm play it in this way. So we have loud, we're gonna go up and we go back, right? We go all the way up. As we discussed before, we could do a little accent on the top note to bring the hand back to the position and prepare to go back to the position that we're gonna play next. We discussed the up and down movement for chords, so always when you play, you should go down on the thumb and up. You should go in and out. You should not stay out because you're too far when you have to reach, so you have to be in each time you have a black key, especially. I'm a little bit out here, I'm going in gradually. Okay, the other thing is that to get the speed, you could rotate these notes. If you keep the hand and the fingers with the same length, it comes by itself. So this is easier too. And then what we'll do is do a little accent on the top note to bring the hand back to position, but it doesn't need to be too too much. So this movement back here. And that's it. Then what we do is do it together and try to do it in reference to the beat. So we have forte. And we go for it. We get it to the climax. Now it's going to change. It's going to go to C sharp minor and we do the same technique and we'll put it together. It's gonna change now from this to another thing. So let's play one last time. Now here we're gonna go into a G diminish, and we have this chord, and we have the G on the bass. And if you do the verses, you will have C sharp diminished also. So this C sharp diminished will place it here, and we have this chord. So he played the bass. at the end. If we want to measure this, you have the first beat on G, then you have the second beat on C sharp, that's second. On G natural, we have that beat again. Two, three, four. Let's see if we play it within the beat zone. We can count again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. For Mara, we wait a little bit longer. Now, when you do it more quickly, you just do that. And there's a forzando at the end. We have very loud here, diminish. A lot of tension. We get into the climax. So, uh, the thing to pay attention to is just remember what we discussed about the chords that we have to go down when we play them so that means the first finger plays down and then we go up same technique and also you rotate towards it if it's an even you could play a little bit more here these two fingers do an up down movement for each one see up down and then you just try to play it. Now here, see we have F sharp diminished. It's this chord. We're gonna place it on the left hand. Same notes. And what we'll do on the right hand is do the version. We get that A and we bring it down here. So we play F. And then, 
when I get there, because the last time we do this diminish, I like to do before the forzando, I like to do a pause. You could go right straight into it. I like it more because we're gonna change now and go back to C sharp minor. So I'll have this. Same technique applies down up, down up, and rotate. If we do it more quickly, remember that's important that the beat is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, fermata will wait, and we go to the next one. I hope this is clear to you. Let's play it. I changed there the volume a little bit. I could have gone straight to it, but because we're going to go to a different type of melody, I retained that a little bit, and we're going to this one. Here we're gonna have the same melody from before. Remember that this is not new. We used to have this first thing that we did. So from one last time, he's gonna bring it downstairs here to the left hand and do this. Accent release. Okay, background for this, remember we did the background before, we did C sharp minor to G sharp 7 to C sharp minor, now it's the same G sharp 7 coming up with a C in it, and back, okay, so if you want to try to match it, you can play it together, match together, match. Match, match, same. Then we get to C sharp minor again. So if we play it now. Technique for the right hand is the same one we've been discussing. You could do accents, you could do fast and slow, but after you get that, try to play with more ease and try to rotate a little bit. And going up and down. This could be applied also here. So the thumb goes down, rotate down, because you could apply the same from the core. So that's why this movement is very important up and down. change now and we put it we're gonna put that kind of on the right hand and with octave so now we're gonna have this and then it's gonna change now octaves we aim towards the top note when we have two notes, we try not to play one note with the same volume as the other. So in this case, I'm going to play the top note right there a little bit louder. Same for all the octaves. This is a leap and I have to kind of press a little bit more here to throw me here. Remember when we discussed the, that, it's the same thing, same thing here. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the left hand and if we have C sharp minor we could just take two notes and have E and G sharp and move it around. We could go to F back C and then it changes. So now if we do it together we start with this chord. Notice that this note is, is longer, so we want more volume to it. 
also the second C sharp and release. If this is longer, more volume. If that one longer, more volume. Da di da di da 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 da. If you have any doubts, you could try to sing it, and that will be a very natural way to get this right. It doesn't need to be so analytical. So let's play from there slowly. Tension, release. Tension, tension again. More. Okay? And then here's gonna change again. Now, if we play this, let's play from the diminished chord, let's say. everything up and we start light. Now let's start this with the left hand. C sharp G to B to A to F. Big bass at the end. For the right hand, many people have questions. I think the best you could do is group them. So that means you're gonna group them by four notes. You're gonna have F sharp E, C sharp E. So if you do it like this, you think E is always the same. So I have to learn F sharp and C sharp. So I'll do this. So I will do that over and over until you can see the pattern. Now for the next one you do the same but you change instead of the targeting notes it's the F. Then we go to the next note, F sharp. Now A. And then we change. Another way to uh, look at it is looking at the notes that don't jump. So E, E, F, F, F sharp, F sharp, G sharp. G sharp. So those always repeat. So we could do. F. Then we get to a different chord there. Now, if you put it together, we'll have the F sharp. Now we change. The pause is just for practicing purposes. So if we do it now, okay, I recommend taking a look at those four notes over and over until you clearly see the pattern F, E, C sharp, E F sharp, F just done so if you do that I think you have no problems you could do some rhythms Just play it. And we change the chord now. The very famous now, F sharp minor. We're gonna bring it all the way up and we're gonna add an arpeggio. We have this note. All the way down. So the reason I stopped there is because you have to count triplets. Triplets is one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. For every quarter note, you will do three, which is a triplet. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And technique wise, it's not difficult. Just remember the up down movement for each chord. So we're gonna go down here, up. Down here, up. Okay, and we count the triplet. Okay, 
okay? Some people ask me, well, the thumb, but well, you have to move kind of towards it and play it back. You could call it rotation or adjusting of the fingers there when you pass that. So if we do the triplet, notice that I speed up there because we have 16 notes. Now if we do it slowly, we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so when you do this, one, two, three, four, one. One last time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, try to count that. If we do it up to speed. Notice here we change to D major, but we continue to do the same values. Oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now here we're gonna play 16 notes, so we do. Now if we're gonna play faster. Even faster. Okay? So, practice very slow. I emphasize some of the notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. C sharp, F sharp, A. Well, the most important part, I think, is when you do here the uh, minor, the triplets, to do it right. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then here, 16 notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three again, triplets in D major. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Sixteen notes. Triplets again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Six now. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And triplets again. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Oh, sixteen notes until we get to the scale so it's pretty equal, it's 4 notes it's all 16 notes only when you get to the E we have 5 and then here and we get there cadenza slow down you could pick the tempo, you could play faster but it's coming back to the theme so sharp which we did already I paid you down up and up rotation articulate also and the left yet always seemed to be a little weak so you have to lift it a bit don't leave it too much down so this finger Fourth finger becomes strong towards the right. Go to the E accent, C sharp accent. Can we do it? I hope this video was helpful and if you enjoyed, subscribe. Thank you very much.